What's up, gamers? In this video, we're going to be going over some awesome electric shiny Pokemon hunting locations that you could use to get yourself some shiny electric Pokemon in the game. Also, I just want to say congrats to all the people who are tweeting at me their awesome shiny Pokemon. You guys are awesome for watching the videos and sending me the cool shinies you get. So I hope everyone who watches this can also tweet at me or send me your shiny Pokemon that you are catching because of these guys. Let's get on with the video. All right, so for this sandwich, we're going to be making an electric encounter one and I'm going to be doing the expensive one, the expensive recipe. So for this, we're going to be using a yellow bell pepper. I'm going to go down, grab a salty, and grab a spicy. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. Of course, comments, please mention the other recipes that are not forced to use salty. You guys are doing a great job, by the way, mentioning that in every video. Pikachu pick, because Pikachu's a electric type. And you'll be getting sparkling power electric level 3, idle power electric level 3, and encounter power level 3 once you consume the sandwich. A very fun palmy and pomo hunting spot. If you watch my videos, we love going here. It's going to be in this spot right here. So you can fly to the beach here and then climb up this wall and you'll be introduced to a whole group of families here. Now, you're going to be looking for a red shiny. And I know, by the way, palmies and palmos are literally everywhere in this game. But I've noticed over here, it's really just dumb. And the fun part about this hunting spot is that they're all going to spawn in groups. And when things spawn in groups, that means you can do really fast run buys like this, despawn them all out and not worry about missing these spawns now the whole families will spawn as you're going at ultra speed because you're not getting single spawns showing up so what i can do is i i tap a wall and then you're gonna just run back you get a whole family here and and the moment you see something that's much more reddish pinkish than anything else you're done you got your shiny that's basically the way to go so you can run around this whole area or you could do the entire lap which is something we've done in our other videos like you drop down here here's a bunch of them over here and don't get deceived by the lighting <laughs> the lighting can mess you up with the shades and whatnot but you'll really be able to notice the shiny different from the other ones and just make sure you're looking around when you're running these laps um yeah this is this is my spot you can camp in different corners in this area you can find different spots just to quickly despawn them in and out it's totally up to you like some people can even do this where you just jump like that they're despawn you come back and you get a whole nother group just like that that's another nice trick maybe actually this cliff could be even better because look that's three families right there i just do a, a nice zoom out like that oh and then we just walk back over here i mean fly back over there fly back up and there's some family so there's different tricks you can probably do all over this mountain but yeah you can use this one to do your palmies and pommel hunts if you're enjoying this series of shiny hunting locations make sure to hit that subscribe button and that like button it helps out a lot and it shows me that you guys really do appreciate it as i do put in a lot of work to make these videos if you want to do a solo pichu hunt it's going to be located right over here in the first part of the game by los platos that's the spot i am and you can see that there, there's just there's there's a lot of pichu there's like one two three four five five six seven eight nine they're around me the pichus are everywhere i'm surrounded by pichus this is pichu heaven if you're a pichu lover um and yeah you can hunt here this is a, clearly a great spot before i send my pokemon out to kill them all <laughs> but yeah if you want to hunt some pichus this would be the i actually feel I, I don't feel right doing this i'm sorry oh my god i'm so sorry guys okay all right let me not do that yeah that's your pichu hunt and this is going to be your location for a pichu and pikachu dual hunting now the shinies are going to be confusing for these but uh here it is from cortando east just come all the way down to this spot right by this tree and you can see uh right over here there is quite a bit of pikachus and pichus let me do my double home zoom in click you guys can see that there is pikachus here there are pichus here and the fun part about this hunt is it's just it's just these guys by the tree you really don't have to worry about much there might be a little flabebe uh under the tree but besides that you would pikachus everywhere and what you want to do is basically just despawn them all and then come back and respawn them you're gonna have to pay a little bit of attention pikachu might be obvious because it's gonna be a little more orange but pichus are just gonna be much more saturated than regular pichus it, it's tough so <laughs> pay attention to the pichus look a little closely when you are hunting them and what i like to do is i just walk away see i see i get scared this could this be a shiny i don't know these pichus are, are are terrifying to me right remember just attack a pokemon if you're if your pokemon doesn't want to attack it, it is a shiny but like i was saying what i like to do is i walk away like that despawn a group of them and then i just walk back pretty much into the area get a whole bunch to respawn or you could simply just have your pokemon just keep koing pokemon until you get your shiny to show up but this is definitely a nice pikachu pichu spot to hunt in the game. 
if you want a bunch of pikachu spawns as well you could come over to medali this is our standard trick that we're going to be using for pikachus when you come to medali and it's simple you just walk in and walk out that is how we're gonna focus on these pikachus in the area until you get your shiny so i mentioned that if you do spawn if you do the town reset in the northern area towards this side of medali you'll see a bunch of pikachu also you can start to spot some dedenis also as well but if you move more towards the left side over here you're gonna start to see you're gonna get more electrodes spawning and voltorb spawning in this area along with the dedenis now you know that they're gonna be blue pokeballs and dedenis gonna be a completely darker color it's gonna be very obvious to tell the difference between that pokemon so if you want to spawn out these pokemon move more towards the left side and do the town reset this is pretty nice just like this so pop out west province area three more towards the left northern side and you'll get all the voltorbs you'll get the electrode spawning you'll get the dini spawning and you could just do your lazy town reset method over here for these pokemon since it's a lot easier on this side of medali all right what Welcome to the Voltorb location. This is going to be all the way in East Province, Area 3. There's just going to be tons of Voltorbs everywhere. And just as we spawn in, I wouldn't be shocked if we missed a shiny that easily because there's just so many of them spawn in. Now, the key for Voltorb is you're just going to be looking for a blue Pokeball. That's it. You see how many just spawn. There's just so many. Now, I know it's going to be terrifying for a lot of people when they start seeing this explosion, but my buddy Keith posted that he bumped into a bunch of Voltorb and the blue ones actually actually do not explode. This is a really cool discovery, which makes it very much easier for people to shiny hunt this. Also, fun fact, while I was realizing this, I remember someone commented on my grass video that in a desert storm, bramblins that walk around get blown away, but the shiny ones don't. So this is pretty cool. And the cool thing, by these guys exploding, it's almost like a free, almost, how do you say it? Reset for the Pokemon in the area. So if you don't want to, you know, despot out the areas, you just let them see you, let them blow up, and they'll be able to spawn in new ones. But obviously, that's not as fast as just walking away from an entire group and seeing what you get. And also, I noticed these guys spawn in pretty quick. So I'm not saying go ahead and run full speed, but you get a good amount that does show up around you when you're when you're walking. So of course, take your time to be fully safe. Look around, look up, look down. These guys are spawning everywhere with this one until you happen to find yourself a nice blue Pokeball for the Vort Baltorb. An alternate option to hunt down the Voltorbs will be in Zappa Pico East. This is going to be simply the town respawn method. So just align yourself right at the tip over here. Make sure you're zoomed out all the way. And when you step out, you're going to get all your Voltorbs spawning in front of you. This is going to be a lot more easier, lazier of an approach. You also get Magnemite spawning in on the right. So you can look to the right, look for a Magnemite. They're going to be a little more yellow than just the silver color. It's going to be hard to notice in different light. But yeah, just look at that. All those Voltorbs are going to be gone. I step back out. There's going to be more Voltorbs showing up over there. And simply was you keep doing this you're gonna spot your wait that's a shiny magnemite see that there we go town re town reset work this is not a hot magnemite spawn but hey it works right so if you open up your map and head over to this is a good spot right over here okay cartondo west this is your bug gym town you're gonna spawn at this pokemon center and from this pokemon center there's a very cool path that i kind of figured out for myself to hunt these mareep down so it's a complete rotation so you're gonna climb up this pathway here and you're then just gonna start heading this way right against the rock edge and what you're gonna be looking for is a pink sheep now you can do zigzags here to try to spawn in a few other ones don't want to go too fast even though there are families of mareep that do spawn you will have some solo ones that spawn here and there like that one if that was shiny and you were going really fast you would miss it these groups would show up though but you see how those small ones spawn in slow so walk pretty slow around this area follow the border i noticed the most success with groups of families around this area there you go as you're walking there's another family to your left now there are also little like i mentioned pommies and palmos going everywhere here around the area. Those are just a little side project if you do happen to see those shiny while you're hunting these Pokemon. So yeah, just walk the borders here. I'm just literally walking the borders of the town, making sure to check for that pink shiny. All you gotta do is find pink. Do not get trolled by Jigglypuff in this area. Jigglypuff is quite the troll, so you don't want to deal with that. And yeah, just uh, you can follow this pathway as I'm speaking about it. I do want to complete it so I can show you guys so you have an idea of exactly how I'm doing this. But yeah, hug the edges and then follow the borders. And then you can just rinse and repeat.
repeat this again. And you know you're pretty much done with the rotation when you stop seeing these Mareeps showing up, but I noticed the borders are very good in order to do this. And pretty much after you're done with this entire lap, you're just gonna hit, hit a corner, turn around, and just rinse and repeat. So here we go. I'm just gonna rinse and repeat, and you'll eventually get your shiny Mareep. Now, if you don't have the patience to do the walk method, you can start zooming at full speed and just try to get the groups of families. But realize you're going to probably miss some of the solo spawns. Like, you're gonna miss them sometimes when you're going really fast. Okay, while doing my pathway, I finally bumped into one. So let me just go ahead and save. Yes, the pink sheep showed up. If you want to go for the second evolution, specifically just that one, go to Porta Marinada. And uh, from here, and yes, I know my Spanish is botched sometimes. Okay, guys, I'm, I try. I try. Anyway, uh, from here, you're going to be finding a lot of flappies on this pathway. So from this Pokemon Center, I simply am just going to be walking this pathway all the way to the Casa Royal Lake area. That's all I'm going to do. And for flappies, you're going to be looking for a green tail and more of a pink mane around it. Like the fluff going to be pink and its little tail is going to be green. So it's going to be obvious by shading versus the other ones, but since they are a little bit on the solo side of spawns, uh, you won't notice it too much. And what I like to do is I, I walk this pathway, and as you walk towards the lake area, you're going to see a bunch of these. Remember, it's not going to be at the lake. It's going to be before the lake. So what I'm doing is I'm basically walking from here. I'm exploring this whole entire pathway up to there, and that's it. I'm not crossing this bridge because this is my main path that I'm doing for the second evolution. So that's all you're going to have to do. Uh, so if you want to solo hunt this and get the whole line, of these Pokemon, this would be a, a great way of doing it. So just pay attention, look in the grass, ignore our constant palmies and palmos spawning because they're just everywhere and look for the correct Flaffy as you are traveling towards this area and hopefully you can get a shiny. Now, if you want to do some nice family hunting, you got Ampharos's and Mareeps over here. And these are going to be really easy because these are going to be all completely pink. You see something pink, you're good to go. And the best part about this area is you're getting completely family spawns, nonstop family spawns of uh, Ampharos in this area. So they're going to be surrounded by Mareeps. So you'll be able to get the this evolution line here. So this is another great way of hunting here, minus our Palmies and Palmot spawn, spawning everywhere. But yeah, the families are here. They're going to be pretty obvious. And I told you the benefit of having family spawn is that when you have family spawn, you can move at a lot faster pace and go through it. So I guess this can be a dual hunt if you want for Mareeps and for the Ampharos. This could be a dual hunting spot for the Palmos as well and Palmots. But yeah, look at that. Look at these families spawning here. Like, this is awesome. Like a whole group of them. And they're just going to be pink. They look so nice. So yeah, just zoom past here all you want. It's the nonstop family spawn place. Not like the Mareeps you saw earlier that have single spawns like look at that it's very easy to get these to spawn here you want to just skip everything and go for an Ampharos here's the way to do it right over here at the watchtower by the lake so good luck hunting in this area uh, North Province Area 1 watchtower and pretty much runs all the way up to this spot so you can hunt over here all right gamers this is going to be a Pinchurchin Pinchurchin however you pronounce it any watch roll hunt now this pretty much can be done on almost any single beach and what we're going to be looking for with the watch rolls is a more purple color on their head so it's a it's a nice purple hue it's going to be a little bit different than the usual one it's it's crest is going to be a lot lighter as well so you'll be able to spot this and the pincurchins are going to be black pretty much a lot blacker and their snouts are going to have orange on it so these will be easy to identify when you are looking at that purple color is going to be the most obvious and watchable so you might have to do zoom ins with a double home button which you can do in your settings and enable it so when i'm trying to identify if that's a shiny or not i'm going to use my home button because these guys are going to be flying everywhere it's gonna be really annoying sometimes but what you want to do basically for this hunt is is start from one part of the beach and then you're gonna move to the next part now first off i'm gonna be you know just taking a look at if are those any shinies don't want to miss a shiny and i'm gonna keep moving because they're gonna start spawning on the beaches as you start moving now don't go too fast here because your pincurchins are spawning on the beach so you want to keep an eye on them these birds you really want to focus on like okay does it have the purple shading no all right gonna keep moving on and i just keep going and you're gonna get a bunch of uh, groups of them spawning sometimes so you'll see them over here by the shore there's just so much i don't know there's a lot of these birds here it's it's a very annoying hunt because they do take off so maybe the second evolution might be a better hunt but if you want the baby this is what you're gonna have to do and then you're gonna get your bonus of pink along the way 
There they are. Hello, hello. There's your quick watch. So you can get a good look at them before they all start to take off. Some solo spawns, some regular ones. Just walking on the beach. And then as soon as you're done, hit the water real quick. Maybe do a little quick reset on these guys. Despawn them out. Tap that wall. And then start to head back. And just simply repeat it over and over again until you happen to get your shiny. But now let's go to the second beach location, which should be a little bit better and, and easier to identify if you don't want to just go for the baby. So this is going to be beach number two all the way up north by the north province area three this is where we're gonna get our kilowattrels and again a little bit bonus of our pin kerchins spawning here so these will be a lot more obvious to see with their purple color you don't have to stare as much as you would for the little watchels so it should be easy to spot it's a longer beach so pin kerchins will be a lot easier to spot here and uh, you'll get more of them to spawn so basically what you want to do here is simply just head over to that lighthouse make sure to check your back because you are getting a couple of electric pokemon spawning along this route there's another group of them so good families of kilowatcho over here and the shiny like i said is pretty obvious you look at that purple color around it that's how you're gonna identify the shiny it's it's definitely gonna be obvious not like night and day but it's out of the whole group you definitely will be able to see it so just pay attention to the pin kerchins and that in this area if you want a cool tad bulb spot this is going to be the swamp area in area one pretty much or in the first area of the game i i don't know i call this first area one because it's the starting area but yeah let me show you in the map so i don't i don't sound dumb all right this is going to be actually in south province area one look at that in the swamp area nice all right so you're gonna be heading towards the swamp and pretty much you're gonna be finding your tad bulbs here now this is one of the harder shinies to notice because the tip of its tail has to be red so when you're paying attention to the shiny make sure you're looking at that tail that is so important to identify when looking at these also if you're in this little river area here there you also spawn here as well so you have not only just this swamp area to walk around but you also have the water spot to enjoy so this is a great a land location you just walk around see what you get despawn them out and really pay attention like I said, to the tip of its tail, because that is going to be the indicator of the shiny for this Pokemon. It's going to be an obvious red, as you can see in the picture, or for the shiny comparison. But it is, this is a difficult shiny. With this information, you guys should definitely be able to hunt this Pokemon down with absolutely no problem. Okay, I've been having a hard time finding a, a decent belly bolt spawn area that gives families, but I think I may have found a good one here that's decent. It's not like crazy good, but it's decent enough where you get families to spawn. It's be this little river area coming down or the stream area coming down from the snow mountain so what i noticed is as you're going down this path you just gotta look to the right you don't want to bump into any of these guys here i noticed right after this little curve here is when they start to show up yeah so there is a whole entire belly bolt family here and it doesn't matter how fast you run because belly bolts families will spawn as you're going down this this riverbank so you just keep going down this thing make sure you're looking keep your eyes looked out because they could just spawn right in front of you Ooh, there's another family that spawned there now belly bolt's gonna be very obvious it's shiny is going to be very clear it's a much more brighter yellower shiny than previously it is and there there's another family and pretty much you just want to run up and down this hill area to get these belly bolt there's another belly bolt family right there and that's pretty much the technique to get the belly bolts now if you do have a better spot for belly bolts you can let me know as you go down the hill of course you're gonna get more electric spawns gonna get chaotic but i just run up and down and yeah you can just simply repeat that if you want to just bump into more families because i noticed there's a lot more static belly bolt spawns than just solo ones so go ahead try to pull this one off and let me know your success with these family ones that spawn up and down these areas and if you're able to get a shiny all right so if you go to porto marinada right over here it's gonna be a really cool spot to do some rotom shiny hunting now rotom is going to be a red color it's gonna look a lot more different than these ones and there's a little trick here in this area there's a little cheat code spot here so oh man it's gonna be rough in the rain but we're gonna be looking for the red one that is shiny but what you're gonna do is simply stand right here it's gonna say porto marinada look exactly where i am pop it open on the map too so you guys can see the dead spot location and what you're gonna do is as soon as you walk out of here like that you're gonna get all the rooms to spawn back and you can see there's like one two three four uh look over there we got five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay listen there's over 12 rooms that are spotted that's a lot of rooms and all i'm gonna do is just walk back here 
here. Oh, I didn't get my shiny. Okay, no problem. I'm gonna walk back right there. Step back over here. And I'm just gonna get all my free Rotom spawns over and over again until I find my nice red Rotom shiny. Now, once you get your shiny, there are different forms that I did make a YouTube short on that. So you can go ahead and check that out. I'm going to link that YouTube short on how to quickly change your Rotom forms and get that fast because I think it's really a nice ultimate flex if you're able to quickly just, you know, show off that. Hey, I got all the Rotom forms in shiny. And uh, yeah, people are gonna be like, yo, that's that's crazy. How'd you do that? <laughs> you could just be like, oh yeah, it's the it's the Porto Marinada trick. Uh, you just step in and step out. And eventually I'm gonna bump into a shiny Rotom. That would be cool if I got it on this clip. But uh, yeah, it looks like I'm not gonna get it on this clip. But yeah, look at all these Rotoms. How cool is that? So many spawn in this area, nighttime, and it's a quick, easy reset. And it's that simple. So there you go. That's how to hunt Rotom. And uh, good luck. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping a lot of you get Rotoms here. This, this, this should be really helpful for you Rotom hunters. If you go to the west side of Medali, you're going to be spawning in more electrodes, Voltorbs, and Dadinis. But what we're doing is not covering these guys. We're going to be covering Pachirisu. And Pachirisus tend to spawn as you go further out towards the tree areas here. You'll start to notice a little more Pachirisus amongst the areas. So there you go. There's a Pachirisu here. I start going towards more trees. You'll start to notice more Pachirisus. And this is fun because Pachirisu shiny is pink and it is an electric Pokemon. And it's nice to see that they do spawn. You get some Pikachus up in the mix with Pachirisus, but overall, it is a great Pachirisu area as you move further from the town. Here we go by this tree. You can see another group of two just hanging out here. They are going to run away, but yeah, I've noticed by Medali, you're going to get a nice Pachirisu spot, so you can hunt around this area. It's not really going to be a Pachirisu town reset method, but more of, hey, they're going to be hanging out by the trees, and this is probably a good spot to go ahead and hunt them. Probably this, yeah, I'm noticing this little rotation might be good by this, uh, this little water area because they're hanging out just around the tree, so yeah, try this area. Let me know your luck in getting a Pachirisu here. Again, look for the pink one, and it's going to be further out from the town because the closer you go to town, the more Pikachus and the same stuff that you see. If you want to do a Dedeni, Dedini, however you pronounce it, you want to find these Pokemon solo. Again, they're electric fairy, so it's going to work really well with the electric because by taking out the fairy part of the sandwich, you're getting rid of all these Flabebes spawning in this area, which is very, very nice. And uh, here you can see a whole group of them, these little pixelated, lovely Pokemon right over here. And they're going to be running around the flowers. Now, the shiny is going to be very obvious for this. It's going to be a lot darker, uh, almost inverse color. So you'll be able to identify it very very easily and you can see just how many are spawning here so it should be very easy for you to get the shiny so what i like to do is you know just despawn a whole entire group of them and then just walk back into that area get a whole new group of them to spawn and then that's it you'll eventually bump into your shiny now you could also just run around this area you also have sometimes a pomo and pomos they're always going to be here palmies and pomos but focus on your didinis here this is the main hunt and they they'll there'll be a lot of them here so just look at the flowery area flower the flower area area uh, you'll be spotting them in this spot and like i said again the shiny is gonna be obvious so good luck walk back and forth be careful they are single spawns so you don't want to rush through the area they're not family spawns and you'll be eventually getting one if you do that this is a great area to do some hunting so from the glaciado gym if you go to this pokey stop over here just like that there are going to be a uh, I, I like this being a nice pathway family spawns of just magnemite and magnetons all over this mountain they are everywhere by the way, you don't have to just follow what I'm saying. You can choose to explore wherever you want. And you're going to be looking for a more yellow, bronze looking one. That's the difference between the shiny and the non shiny. Sometimes you go too fast, they might be hard to miss. So just stop real quick and pay attention. Now, because this is a nice little pathway that you did your gym chaw on, it should be pretty fast to just run down this one. And the families will just spawn around you. So, what I like to do is just run down this path, make sure to take a look at them. You're not going to miss any spawns because they spawn as families. When they spawn as families, it makes it a lot easier to quickly just run and see what the heck is them and then you keep going so you just run down this pathway you can like i said again you can jump to anywhere you want on this mountain they're on the slopes they're on the edges they're on the sides they're they're pretty much anywhere you think you want to go because they take over completely this area right there you go there's a whole nother group over there just tons 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 you can head to the other the other town there's a whole group over here and just you can just rotate back from town to town doing this trick here but yeah that's pretty much how you're going to get your magnemites and magnetons all right, ladies and gentlemen, I know people love hunting evolutions, and luckily for all you people, we don't have to do a date reset or date skip, and we don't have to try to get a entire mass outbreak in order to pull this off. This is going to be a very 
Look at the amount of Jolteons around me. This is going to be a very great Jolteon hunting spot. And I'm going to show you the exact location on the map. And that's going to be right over here. Listen, I'm telling you, this Medali area is golden for electric type. So what you can do is just once you go from the Medali West, just climb up this hill where I am. And it's going to be Jolteon galore. And when you're up here, you're just going to be looking for a green Jolteon. That's it. That's what you want to hunt here. So just despawn a group of them out completely like that. Walk away from them. And then once you despawn them all out, just head right back towards where they are all starting to spawn in. And you're going to keep repeating this pathway pretty much until you happen to get your shiny Jolteon, which is going to be a nice green color. So you're not going to be able to miss it. Now, they don't spawn in as fast as you want them to. So that's where you're going to have to hang out in the area with them. Another another easy trick to do with the Jolteons also is you can just do picnic resets. I think that might be the safer approach here because look, look at the amount you're getting here. It, it's a lot. Yeah, so if you do the picnic reset, which I'm going to do real quick, there we go. And as soon as you Pokemon out, you just pack up and go. Look at all those shinies. Really cool. And boom, you get all the spawns showing back up. You can just rotate your camera around. These Jolteons are still spawning at nighttime. It's not changing the fact that it's day or night. So you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, you can just keep doing that until you get your shiny Jolteon. And I really do hope you get your shiny Jolteon because this is uh, definitely a fun shiny to have. And it looks very different than the original one. So good luck with your Jolteon hunt. So this is a very good Shink spot from the Watchtower. Pretty much you just want to walk around in this area and you'll find your own nice spots that you might think are a lot better. Like, look at the amount of shinks right over here. That is a good amount of shinks, right? Which could possibly spawn a shiny as you're walking by because this is boosted with the sandwich. This is going to be the best shiny hunting spot for Shinx and Luxray. It is going to be in the Bamboo Forest in North Province Area 2. This forest is going to be the spot for you to be getting your shiny Shinx and Luxray. As you can see, they're literally spawning everywhere as opposed to using other sandwiches. This is a very good spot. So they spawn in families, they spawn solo, and all you're going to be looking for is a yellow Shinx or a yellow and black Luxray. That's really all you're looking for. And you really just want to go back and forth in this area. It's going to be very simple to pull off. Make sure you're not going too fast so you have enough time for these Pokemon to spawn. And I just like to go back and forth between the areas. See a bunch of Luxray coming in here. Solo Luxrays. And then you'll get your family of Luxray with the Shinx around it. So you can pretty much easily hunt the whole entire family. Just grab two Shinx. Maybe evolve the shiny Shinx if you get it. And if you're able to pull off a shiny Luxray, that'll be awesome too. Now, I've noticed different entry points might be the best way to do it here. You could simply just despawn out a bunch of the Pokemon here as you walk out. I like to just walk all the way back, despawn out a group of Pokemon, and then walk right back in and hope I get the shiny on the respawn. So I do that in some areas. You can also do picnic reset around a big group of Luxray families. So that is something you can also keep in mind. But yeah, pretty much the overall thing that you want to do is just go back and forth. Make sure you're not going too fast so you don't miss these solo Luxray spawns. But if you get a good area of families and uh, you want to picnic reset around them, that might be the play. And you should be able to get a Luxray in between one sandwich if you're spending your time here. So good luck on getting your shiny Shinx and Luxray here. All right, so I was just going to get to my starting position to show you where to catch this Pokemon, these Toxels. <laughs> and it just happened to show up right when I was going to tell you guys where to start anyway so uh real quick before i start that johnny it's going to be this pretty area pretty much by south province area four and the pathway is pretty much going to be where i am right over here running you down all the way up to this lake area running back and forth this was going to be the pathway i talked about but it just happened that we happened to uh, get a shiny right here so um let me just bump into this i love how i love when it shows up like during a recording or right before we start oh what a nice shiny so, like I was mentioning, this is pretty much the area that you want to rotate from. So, I, I'm at the top here, and you can see all these little purple dots here. Those are going to be your Toxels, and you notice that the shiny one is very obvious compared to these guys here. So, what I like to do is just simply walk down this area. They spawn in solo by solo. You can just walk right down to the area. Like, look how many you get spawning in. You could spawn them out as well. Just a nice, consistent amount of Toxels. Look at that. We're just walking. We're just getting Toxel, Toxel, Toxel everywhere you go. And I usually like to come down to about this area here and then once i'm once i'm all the way at the bottom of this lake area or move closer to that tree i then just reset my path well now you guys already know they're here so i'll, I'll go a little faster here so i'm just gonna go over to this tree and once i'm i'm done with this spot i'm just gonna rotate back and repeat my pathway again 
And that's pretty much how I hunt for Toxels. And I'm probably not going to be hunting for Toxels again because I got it during this recording, just like most of my shinies are completed in this. So if you want a Toxel, that's the way to go. Good luck getting one. All right, so we're going to be hunting a Pokemon called Toxtricity, and it's going to have two forms, an amp form and a low key form. And this is going to be in the Alfernada Cavern. Now, this hunt's going to be not really hard because all you got to do is just walk in this cave, simple, right? And you're going to be seeing a bunch of them spawn right in front of you. Now, you're going to be looking for a pink form of the Pokemon, and it's really simple. You just got to walk right out of here, just like this. I know there's a couple of Pokemon spawns in my way. I despawn the group that's inside. I walk back back in here and I will see a bunch of them start spawning around again. There they are. There's both forms. You got the yellow one, the blue one. Remember, this blue one's not a shiny or the yellow one's not a shiny, depending on what you find. There are other platforms too that you can hop in in this area if you want to just get a different area of hunting here. I kind of like this these areas too. You stand here. You can also do picnic resets on the Pokemon. So when you do picnic resets, it'll despawn them all out, respawn them all in. A picnic reset for those who ask about what that is, is simply you opening up your picnic and closing your picnic and and that'll cause all the spawns to reset in the area. So that's another way you can hunt it. Now, the other Pokemon in this area that you find, like you see a Sableyes and, and Gabites, these are going to be some static spawns that do show up, but mostly you're going to get your Toxtricity. So this will be a great way of you hunting this Pokemon down. Remember, look for the much more pink version, and you should be able to get this one pretty quick if you despawn and respawn them out of the areas or, or walk out the cave and walk back in. And you should easily be able to get the sick shiny. So good luck with your Toxtricity. This is okay is going to be at the Sokarat Trail. It's going to involve Raichu. And this is really nice because all you're going to see here is just Raichus. And when you're looking for the shiny, you're going to be just looking for a little bit more orange. It's going to be really obvious when you're looking at all these Raichus. The really good part about coming to Sokarat Trail is... It's the only thing that's going to spawn that is going to be electric. You don't have to worry about anything else here. So <laughs> Raichu Hunters, you're going to really enjoy this spot because they are just, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Now, of course, because they are in a solo group, you're not going to want to speed up too fast here when it comes to this electric Pokemon. You need, to, you need to give it time to spawn in. That way you'll be able to identify and locate the shiny pretty quick amongst them because if you go too fast, you don't want to just have it despawn. So I just go to a little decent spot here. You could also not have to walk everywhere, you know, despawn a group out and then walk towards them. Oh, there's a shiny. All right, there we go. See how obvious that shiny is? Yeah, you want to despawn out a group of them. I was about to despawn that whole group and get a new one, but luckily you rotate your camera. So make sure you're zoomed out. Uh, you're despawning a group of them and then moving back in on that group. That's another way to go. Or just keep going in circles around this area until you find a shiny Raichu like I just did. Here is a spot on the map. This one's not going to be easy. This is going to be located by Porto Marinada, but I'm going to be in the water for this. And in this area, we're going to be hunting Tiny dynamo and electric and these shinies are really hard if you take a look at the screen here right now it is not going to be easy to identify these shinies in any capacity you're going to have to really pay attention to these pokemon electric is going to be very difficult as well you're going to have to look for a little bit more green eyes and the fact that they don't spawn above that quick is kind of hard so like even if you were to do the zoom in trick it's definitely not easy so the the safest way to probably get an electric would be to do a date skipping trick with the sandwich on and get a mass outbreak because it's definitely not easy to get these as shinies the best way to pull this off would definitely be do date skipping so what you would do pretty much is you'd open your map you stay in a particular area you hit your home page you go to your settings and you drop over here and do your date and time skip and again if you don't want to do these date and time skips just set your clock to 11:59 or wait naturally to 11:59 with an electric sandwich and then go into your game and eventually as you refresh refresh you're gonna get different spawns showing up and eventually you'll get your electric spawn it's not showing up for me right away but yeah it, it's definitely not easy you have to do a lot of looking at these pokemon see the patterns on it also the water distorts it so it makes it look like there's two of them it's not an easy hunt so good luck to everyone doing this but the water should be nice to people who are on the hunt for them. That's the best I could offer you guys. It's not easy. So good luck hunting down these Pokemon here. And let me know if you have actually a better trick to do it. I'm, I'm curious. Not every hunt's the easiest for me. Now, Oricorio Pom Pom or the electric Oricorio is not worth having a hunt for because in our fire video, we cover a way better spot for Oricorios. And because of the ability to buy an item and convert them to any single color or typing, it makes no sense to hunt the electric one. So yeah, check out the fire video for the Oricorio, and then you could just convert it to the electric one if you would want the shiny version of that. But here is a shiny just in case so you can spot the electric Oricorio. All right, so Pokemon Scarlet players, when you reach area zero, you're going to 
be moving towards this rock formation from research lab number two. So I just make a left. Of course, you're going to see a bunch of Raichus down here because they do also spawn here as well as Pomos. And you're going to see Sandy Shocks. This is a Sandy Shock location where they all spawn. And the shiny is sometimes hard to see in a specific light. Now, if you want good Sandy Shock spawns, I suggest, you know, just climb up over here. There we go. A lot better uh, Sandy Shock spawns up here. So this is where you're going to be basically hunting this guy in this game. The top of the hill is always my favorite spot. And what you want to do is pretty much just zone out these guys. Let them all despawn. Pay attention to the legs. The legs are going to be a lot more black on the shinies. I'll get these Raichus out of here too. Come on, Raichus, move. Then we're going to move forward back into the spot again. Stand there. And you can't picnic reset here. So this is the way you're going to have to reset them up here. I'll wait for all of them to spawn around you until you get uh, your shiny. And I happened to luckily get my shiny Sandy Shocks on stream when I was doing a paradox on here. So this is pretty much the footage of me getting it. And uh, it was awesome. I didn't even realize it. And most people would have actually missed this shiny because it did not look shiny when I first bumped into it. So good luck on your paradox hunt over here. All right, you're going to be in area zero for violent players. And you're going to notice a bunch of iron hands here. But from area zero, research lab number two, we're going to do the same thing we did for Sandy Shocks. You're going to walk over to the spot where the iron thorns are. Now, of course, we're going to go head up to the top. And iron thorns pretty much is going to be a very silver shiny with green on the inside so it's gonna be pretty easy to identify but let's climb up here we're gonna get a good amount of them spawning in this area good amount so this is the iron thorn spot and what you'll see is compared to scarlet you're not gonna have a bunch of electric pokemon spawning around you so iron thorn hunting's gonna be a lot easier than having these other raichus and other pokemon interfere with you just iron hands and iron thorn so he spawned the giant group out look how many there are here and what you're gonna do is just move forward respawn them all in you're pretty much doing the exact same trick that you're doing in Pokemon Scarlet or the Sandy Shocks. And you can see pretty much how many are around me. Like there are just tons of these guys just everywhere. They're spawning up here. But this is the best spot to do it. And again, just you spawn them all out, rinse and repeat until you get your shiny iron thorns all right gonna make this really simple from research lab station number four you're just gonna come over here and you're gonna just hop hop off just like that and go ahead and fly straight down from there and that's the rock we're heading to and this is pretty much how you're going to hunt your iron hands nothing complicated i know we we kind of went over pathways in the other video just to spawn a bunch but this is <laughs> this is the best thing to do just spawn them in like this see if they're shiny by just noticing the top of their head and if they're not that's it you can just with the fighting set which is well, same exact thing, same technique, and then just despawn them all out. If they don't spawn in shiny, walk back until you get your shiny. Here's footage of me getting the shiny one from another video. All right, and that is all the Paradox Pokemon that you can hunt with the Electric Sandwich. Well, now you know a lot of awesome shiny electric hunting locations. Make sure to check out this video over here to see even more spots on where to do some nice shiny hunting.